From Wall Street to Main Street, this is LA Late. It's a major night here on Evening's LA Late. As the latest crashes from Wall Street continue, the situation tonight is FedEx, Federal Express, giving a withdrawal of all earnings guidance for the rest of this year because they say it's going to be a very bad recession. And their stock is down 24%. 24% in one day crashes the rest of the market. Down another 300 day points today, Wall Street. The situation continued on Tuesday and moreover ended the week as well. Down 1,100 points at the start of the week because of the inflationary numbers that continue to go higher. We'll be looking at what those inflationary numbers say for you. The great news across the board for the raise of your benefits. Yes, your benefits are going up a lot. How much? An enormous amount, thousands of dollars of more money is coming to you if you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security and Rail Benefits. We'll go over the latest details. We know tonight, based upon that CPI-W for July and August. Plus, get ready to go in the live chat because we will analyze what the CPI-W for this month, September, is likely happening right now with you in the supermarket and the stores. Then we go on the other breaking news across the board tonight, which is consumer confidence fell dramatically in a new report released by the University of Michigan. We expected that, but how bad was it? And then the bond market. 3.7% was the two-year bond on Tuesday. And as the week continued, every night it went up higher. How high is it tonight? All the breaking news that'll shock your socks off in tonight's evening's LA for the shores of Santa Monica, California. Plus, are the markets overvalued and is there an inflated economy right and inflated expectations? Bank of America has the comments. I have the analysis tonight as well. The great news, massive stimulus. 14 categories of 300 checks for you. Upwards of $300,000. And one viewer tonight is celebrating. She has gotten her family $170,000 by becoming a member of not only LA1, but all three channels. Show you how to get this all this incredible sums of money and the other breaking news making big news tonight. Plus, we'll go over the latest comments from the White House and my commentary is coming up tonight. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, a major recording, a major evening. Let's get to the breaking news starting right here, right now, as Evening's LA goes underway. And good evening, everybody. I hope you're having a beautiful night. It is gorgeous here along the coast of Santa Monica, California. Tonight, we go over that lifetime stimulus. So we'll give thousands of dollars more to you if you're on SSI and SSDI. Plus, those massive checks that are yielding hundreds of thousands of dollars of viewers. The breaking news starts right now for everything from housing to unemployment. Your four stimulus. Thank you for joining me on a big night of Evening Delight. How are you doing? Hope you're having a beautiful night. It is Perfect. It is perfect weather here. Finally, in Southern California, we endured all that horrible heat all, all of, you know, three days. <laughs> Tonight, it's gorgeous. It is really gorgeous September weather, and I'm so excited for you to join me. Let's go right into the breaking news right now. The breaking news to lead was Federal Express. Federal Express at FedEx had given guidance for the whole rest of the year, and that guidance was too optimistic, so they withdrew their guidance for the whole rest of the year because they said there's a massive global recession underway and their bottom line their earnings is going to get hurt it crashed the markets it didn't just crash their stock it crashed the entire wall street and financial markets today upon that news shares of fedex fell 24 percent in one day quarter of its valuation value gone in one day but it wasn't done there yet. The Dow Jones started down 333 points and basically ended down about 300 points today. NASDAQ as well. And that's not just transportation stocks like HBO Logistics, which is down 7% in pre-market trading. It was everything. Every single thing was down across the board. Why? The FedEx had appeared on broadcast media and said, there's a global recession. 
and it's just hurt starting very dramatically. And it's going to hurt our bottom line for the whole rest of this year, and we don't know when it's back to normal. We all knew this. <laughs> we all knew this. I've been discussing this. You and I have been chatting this on this channel since early this year when I was the only and the only American broadcaster in financial news to report a global recession will be starting and hurting very dramatically in the start of 2023 would be two years. But Wall Street was shocked, again, shocked with a quote unquote, by the news, and that is why stocks fell dramatically. FedEx is seen as a bellwether, a stock that doesn't have a lot of volatility, and the comments came in from Robert Teeter, Silvercrest Asset Management, that different sectors have different implications. But this was something no one really saw coming. Transportation were not the only stocks down. Everything else was under pressure. And this is in a week in which we had the inflationary number, the consumer price index number beat on Tuesday. Higher than expected on the headline and the component parts, raising your benefits up thousands of dollars a lifetime, but also crashing down the markets, 1,100 points on Tuesday. The week ends just horrifically. Every single day we're down and it's just getting started. Consumer Confidence also led the breaking news tonight from the University of Michigan. The Consumer Confidence number we were waiting for all week and it was released today. This is a once a month number. And it came in lower than expected at a 59.5, lower than the 60 expected, but higher than the month of July, which was a 58.2. The commentary came in from its organizer with the, with the release of the data. Joanne Hughes says, improvements may persist, but consumers continue to exhibit substantial uncertainty over the future trajectory of prices. Me and the consumer, you are not happy about how much prices cost, and they're very, very uncomfortable with the situation. Who's also uncomfortable with the situation? Anyone wearing lobster shorts, very uncomfortable. <laughs> no, Bank of America. Bank of America had a great report out today. I love this one, why? They said Wall Street is very overvalued. They said stocks are very overvalued. There's too much optimism. There's too much unjustified euphoria. And you all have to come back down to reality, basically. Stops are, stocks are cheaper, says Bank of America, but not cheap enough, says um, it's Savita Subrahamian in a new report released today. And the multiples or the valuations are far too high, meaning people are going to get hurt. People are going to get hurt who bought in or think this is the time to buy, that this is the dip. No. This is the start of the crash. And the other breaking news that's really big tonight was this by Dominic Wilson. We've heard this before, but we heard it very clear today. Inflation will be gone in this U.S. economy because of Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve? No, because a recession is going to knock it away. Dominic Wilson's comments are not unusual. We've had them before on this comment on this channel. He says that the government bonds could be substantial, but even after that, the damage we've already seen that the situation significant only after significant inflation only a significant recession will procure or tame inflation there you go now here is a story that is very critical for you and i to say focus with and that's one of the stories we've been all watching all this week it's the treasury yields i told you when we're talking about stimulus those stimulus checks in every usa 300 checks and you know three hundred thousand dollars we're getting to those in just one second tens of thousands of dollars are landing people's wallets one we're getting one hundred and seventy thousand dollars from this channel this week we'll get into that in a second i said we're going to focus on this channel on data first whatever the federal reserve says we're going to watch it and listen to it very carefully and the bond traders the bond traders, not James Bond, <laughs> the bond traders, the bond traders. What happened tonight that was even more significant starting this week? On Tuesday, when the stock market crashed 1,100 points because the inflation was higher with that August consumer price index number CPI released, the Two-year bond traded higher to its highest level since seen in 2007. That's nearly 20 years ago. What was it? It was a 3.73. At the time, I reported that on the show Tuesday night. It was a major breaking story. Highest level since tw in 20 years, practically. But then the night after that, Wednesday on Evening's Light, I said, did you notice what happened today? The two-year bond went even higher. 
to 3.8. I said, what's going on here? It's been 24 hours. It went from the highest level in 20 years to even higher. Thursday, even higher last night. Tonight, folks, it has not reached the ceiling. Tonight, it's 3.9%. The bond traders definitely see a major issue happening. And the major issue happening is that this economy is changing very quickly. And those bond yields are surging very huge, and it's all because of inflation. And inflation is going to deliver you thousands of dollars, thousands of dollars. Because if you're on benefits, SSI, SSDI, still securing real benefits, you're, you should be celebrating. Because thousands of dollars or more are coming to you, not just in one year but lifetime. Let's go over the latest details across the board. Your benefits are going up a lot because inflation is the highest of a generation. And that raise of your benefits is not just one year, it's a lifetime because once your benefits go up, they never go down. How does this work? Your benefits are tied to something called COLA, cost of living adjustment. And it determines how much your benefits go up. It's determined, COLA is determined by another number, the CPI dash W, released for the month of July for the month of August, and for the month of September. They were released one month after. So the July number was released August 10th. The August number was released this week, September 13th. And the September number is released October 13th. And what are we seeing so far? Largest lift of, a, of your benefits lifetime. It's absolutely incredible. Let's go over what happens. Your benefits are definitely going up. It's the law. And this is you. If you're on SSI, SSDI, Social Security, Rural Babbitts, Veterans Babbitts, it's more than SS200. It's more than SS300. It's thousands of dollars more. And it's automatic, direct deposit, however you receive your checks. You don't have to do anything for it. Some of you $5,000 more, some of you even more than that. Let's go over where it's looking like tonight. Your benefits are tied to those three months of data. The July CPI-W we now have tonight on Eating's LA. The breaking news starts right now. CPI-W is 8.7 for the month of July. The CPI-W for the month of August released this week on September 13th, 8.9. Higher. Yes, going great. Really wonderful. Now, what is happening this month, September? It gets even better. September CPI-W will not be impacted by the Federal Reserve's actions in the month of August and September because why? The Federal Reserve did not meet in the month of August. They're on vacation in the month of August. And whatever the Federal Reserve does in the next two weeks at their September FOMC meeting, the month of September will basically be almost over and it won't filter into the economy anytime thereafter in the, by the end of the month. Wow. So where is that CPI-W right now for you and your money and your benefits? Well, get ready to jump in the live chat right now because we're ready to interact, you and I. We are going to calculate out that CPI-W together starting right now. First, let's go into the component parts that comprise the CPI-W. Some of these are going to be very easy to, to analyze and some of them are not so easy. Let's go over them right now. And when you jump in the live chat, always write what state you're in so other people across the country get that input, whether they are in the same state or a different state. First, let's jump into the easy ones. The salaries. Are the salaries going down in the month of September? Of course not. That's ridiculous. I mean, maybe they should cut Mitch's salary. <laughs> uh, maybe they should just remove his salary altogether. <laughs> <laughs> Sir Lloyd's watching all set. He's like, raise my salary. I'm not raising your salary, Sir Lloyd. Um, salaries are not going down the month of September. And we already know that because in the month of August, they went up a lot. They went up 0.2% compared to the month of July. So that's an easy one. We also have the, um, the non-farm payroll number that showed the salaries are going up. The next number, also easy. Is the rent going down this month? Uh, of course not. <laughs> is the landlord giving you a break and giving you free rent? No, of course not. And this is also an easy one because we have that on Tuesday on the CPI for the month of August. The rent actually went up 1% in one month, 0.8%. So that was also an easy one. All right, let's get to the more difficult ones. Food, which is a big component of the CPI. 
Is the milk and eggs, the butter, the yogurt going down in the month of September compared to the month of August? Jump in the live chat and say up, down, or the same and say what state you're in. My answer, California, up. I'm saying California, up. I just got back from the market. I just got back from the market and, you know, I had thought the milk had gone down. It was right back up at a gallon of milk at three fifty on sale. On sale. Normal price, four ten. Really? Come on. Then the yogurt, if you could find it, it's they're trying to still get that seven dollars for yogurt. The eggs were four dollars a dozen. I mean, you know, we used to complain that the eggs were three dollars a dozen in Los Angeles. That was overpriced. So I am saying California, higher food. Jump in the live chat, say where you are across the board. Energy, which is oil, is like is of course falling this month. But here's the one that is likely also easy for us to answer. Medical care services. Is medical services cheaper this month? Of course not. <laughs> they went up 1% last month, and they're not going down this month at all. So there you go. Where is anything going down in this month of September? Only gasoline. And it's offset by rent, which is 30% of the CPI, and all those other numbers we just went over. So now get ready for the big finale. Jump in the live chat. Remember, say your state. We had the CPI-W for the month of July at an 8.7%. August, an 8.9% CPI-W. Where is that CPI-W, in your prediction, going to land for the month of September? My answer, California, 89 I think, uh, uh, sitting here in California, I think the nationwide CPI-W will be 89 Maybe I'm right, maybe I'm wrong. I want to see your comments, and maybe you think it's going to be even higher. Now, this gets even better than that. Why? Give me three minutes to go over this if you are on Medicare Part B. If you're on Medicare Part B, you're going to see a lot more in your wallet this coming year. This is huge. Last year, your Medicare Part B premiums went up a lot. Why? Because of one medication. That one medication brought your premiums on Medicare Part B through the roof in 2021, up 15%, no longer the case ever again, and not next year. Why? Because Congress passed that bill that removed that cost of that medication, and your Medicare Part B plans will never have those increases. So this is great for my Medicare Part B viewers who are on benefits. Last year, your benefits went up 6%, but your medication was through the roof at 15%. That medication will no longer be through the roof, and that means you'll get the full extent of the raise of your benefits. So finally, final question for you to jump in the live chat. The Seniors League, when looking at the data with that CPI-W in the month of July at an 8.7, said your benefits were going to go up 10%. When that CPI-W was released this week for the last month, higher... 8.9, Seniors League said, well, maybe your benefits will only go up 8%. Uh, why do they adjust downward? I don't know. They don't explain, and I'm not going to justify their rationale. I don't agree with it. So how much do you think your benefits are going to go up? 8%, 7%, 12%, 14%? Jump in the live chat. California, my answer is 11%. I think that basically what we're looking at right now looks around at 10, 11%. I may be wrong. I may be completely wrong because CPI-W is a complicated number and there's a lot of issues at play. Wow. And this, my friends, is why you have to get a forced almost check in every USA. Tonight we celebrate one of the viewers, a triple member to viewer to channel LA1, LA2, and LA3. Margaret was the first triple member, all three channels, and this viewer Dragon was the second triple member. There's been a lot of other double members. Congratulations to Barbara, who's a double member, and others. But Dragon tonight has a big success story for you. As also a volunteer, she had initially gotten, initially gotten, $140,000 for this channel from Four Stimulus Jacks, which I cover in just a second for you. Tonight, she got another $30,000. Incredible, bringing her grand total to $170,000 for her and her family from Four Stimulus. Congratulations, Dragon. Now, you as a viewer know that you can be the next triple six. You can be getting six figures of stimulus from this channel as well. Because I have for you 300 checks that yield a potential $300,000. And we've had a lot of viewers 
close to two hundred thousand dollars from this channel. Lorraine, one hundred fifty thousand, hundred fifty thousand. Mark, one hundred sixty-six thousand. Johnny got eighty thousand dollars in three days on this channel. He then turned around and got two family members fifty thousand dollars in two days. He got his friends and neighbors a quarter million dollars. There's a couple people in just a few days. You can get these tens of thousands of dollars in a few days. Let's go over these incredible checks that you have that opportunity to as well. Let's first understand what they are. The first three checks were passed by the President of the United States by executive action in the month of March. And I've been featuring them on this channel ever since, and viewers have been getting them ever since. Let's look at those first three checks. I label them check A, B, and C. Incredible. $100,000, you qualify. Single individual, $75,000 less, go get it. Married couple, $150,000 less, go get it. And if you're on benefits, go get it. It's from the President of the United States. It's executive action, federal stimulus checks from the federal government. Not from your states. You go get them. They're in every U.S. state because they're from the federal government. Those are check A, B, and C. How do you get them? You become a member of this channel. Go right on this video and join this channel. Get that membership newsletter. And then go in and apply for those incredible checks A, B, and C. But we're not done there yet. Four weeks ago, Congress passed a brand new bill that established checks E through K. Seven new categories bringing us to hundreds of checks. But we're not done there yet. Since then, I have found for you checks L through Q. L through Q are even more checks across that. And where are all these checks? In the membership newsletter. You join this channel, you become a member, and get that newsletter 7 o'clock Pacific, 10 o'clock Eastern, and 9 o'clock Central via the YouTube alerts and go down and get those incredible checks, which brings the grand total now for the Purple Power to an enormous amount of checks. How many? 300 checks, 14 categories of 300 checks, and upwards of $300,000. Wow. And it's growing by the night. We're going to go over all these incredible checks in the big second half. Next, let's go right into the other major stories that are really breaking news tonight, which is the situation unraveling with that inflationary pressure. The inflationary pressure tonight was exemplified in three numbers this week. They were... The Consumer Price Index released on Tuesday, the Producer Price Index released on Wednesday, and the Retail Sales released on Thursday. All three numbers basically said the same thing, that inflation is still going higher in the month of August and September. It's going higher for the consumer, which you're buying the goods, for the wholesaler who's buying the goods, and for when you go and buy products in the stores. The reaction to the news is what has been surprising. Why? Last year, in spring of 2021, I was the only financial broadcaster to report that the U.S. economy would have 8% inflation, and that inflation would not go away for a long time and not get reduced by the Federal Reserve. Well, tonight, we're in the later part of the ninth month of the year, and the Federal Reserve, over six meetings from January to July, seven meetings, have not gotten inflation down at all. And when they return in September, they're going to raise those interest rates. We all know this. They told us this. But Wall Street ignored it. And that is why the comments and the reports coming in tonight and this week from analysts basically say there's a problem out there. And that problem out there is that people are just not getting it. And they are specifically referring to very, very young, unseasoned investors who have no formal training, are very, very young, have never seen a bear market, potentially less than 30 years of age, and have never seen the situation. That's why Bank of America says the valuations in the markets are too high. People are going to get hurt. The bond traders trade up those notes. Why is the bond, the two-year bond, up to 3.9 from 3.7 on Tuesday in less than two days? Because, one, they're anticipating more crash in the stock market. Number two, they're anticipating more raises of interest rates from the Federal Reserve, inflationary pressures. And finally, they are basically saying that people have gotten in on the bag bandwagon of euphoria too early because there's nothing euphoric about a recession. Tonight, we have the stock market really getting clamored, and it's not far from over. The data that came in this week was retail sales increased 0.3% in the month of July. That was higher than Wall Street expected. 
Then when you remove auto sales, there was a slight decrease in the retail sales. Retail sales is like the gallon of milk you went to buy was higher price. Not that you're buying two gallons of milk or two containers of milk. No, that one gallon of milk went higher. On September 14th, the day before that, we had the producer price index, how much the wholesale is paid for the products. And that, uh, that was basically flat. But the day before that was the big day. When the consumer price index number was released for the month of August, and it rose 0.1% in the month of August, higher than expected. And then the core CPI went even higher. That's excluding certain items. It rose even higher, 0.6%, excluding food and energy. Tonight, gasoline is still up 20%, 26% year to date. Airline fares are up 33%. And a new report says that the airline fares are going to go even higher for Thanksgiving and Christmas than you've ever seen in a long time. Electricity is up 16%. Food at the home is up 14% because of inflation. And new vehicles are up 10.1%. That day when this data came out, of course, the two-year Treasury note surged to levels we have never seen since 2007, a 3.735. 3.735. Tonight, it's 3.9. Do you think we're done? We're not done. And I'll explain to you why in the big second half as we also go over all these incredible checks across the board. The commentary that came in from the analysts is that Wall Street has really not grasped the severity of the situation. The severity of the situation, in my prediction tonight, is that the Federal Reserve will be coming back in the next two weeks and doing a 75 basis point increase at the September FOMC meeting of interest rates to get inflation down. And they're not going to get it down because they got to get to 2%. It's at 8 plus percent tonight. And it's not going to take us through the end of the year to get it done. The middle of next year, it's going to take us to get it done. That means you're likely to see upwards of 10 interest rate spikes throughout all the rest of this year and the middle of next year. And my concern is the following. Wall Street does not have that risk embedded into the markets. In the big second half, we're going to go over all these incredible stimulus checks, and that's why you got to get them. Massive stimulus that is yielding $200,000 of people's wallets. That's why you got to get them. Because if you think it's difficult tonight, if you think the situation is unsettling or uncomfortable to hear of this economy right tonight, it's just getting started. It's just getting started. And the big second half, we're going to go over all these incredible checks. You're doing such a great job. I'm really proud of you. You're understanding the data. You're getting the stimulus, and you're staying on top of it. If you just found this channel, welcome. Go on to this video. Become a member. Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP. And in the big second half, we're going to go over each of these incredible 14 categories of stimulus checks. Boy, we got a lot of money to go over. We're just getting started. And yes, with a recession underway, you need these big sums of money to become a member. I'll see you back in 60 seconds as the latest details continue tonight from the shores of Santa Monica, California on Avians. If you want money right now, not five days from now and not five weeks from now, then reach out to the community page. The volunteers can help you find that money for rent and utilities. That's at news.la.com forward slash community. The community page features a series of volunteers who are viewers like you. They can help you find rent, utilities, SNAP, food benefits, mortgage assistance, and help you with eviction moratorium questions as well. Their Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram individuals reach out to them and indicate the city and state you're from, and they'll get back to you shortly. That's a community page. Volunteers working for you, viewers helping one another. Stay with LA for more. Join LA Late Daily for the excitement of the new LA Late Live Daily. The excitement starts on mornings LA Late at 9 a.m. LA Late returns at 11 a.m. daily. And then afternoons LA Late at 1 p.m. Join us daily as the excitement continues live from Santa Monica on LA Late. 
and the exciting in the big second half of Evenings LA from the shores of Santa Monica, California. Hope you have a beautiful night. It is gorgeous here along the coast. There are now hundreds of four stimulus checks in every U.S. state. It's federal stimulus from the federal government. And I'm going to show you how to get them in this big second half. Hundreds of checks for you. And they're absolutely incredible. The Purple Power are getting them. I'm going to show you how to get them right now. First, you go into this video, become a member, be part of this incredible Purple Power community, and get these big checks, massive sums of money. Let's go over everything you need to know with those checks starting right now. The first three categories of checks passed by the President of the United States by executive action in March. So viewers started getting these checks in March. Then seven categories passed by Congress about four weeks ago. Thereafter, checks L through Q passed progressively in different places, and I feature them on the membership newsletter. So how do you get this money? Step one, go under the video and subscribe to this channel. Step two, go into the video and join the channel. Become a member, Purple Hawk, Purple Power, Casino VIP. Then you get that membership newsletter. Go in that membership newsletter Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time, 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central. Go down and where you see the individual check, apply. A, apply. B, apply. C, tells you who to call. E through K, apply. L through O, apply. And get those incredible sums of money. How big are those checks? The largest check is $100,000. It's incredible. The smallest check, about $8,000. The fastest routing time? I've had viewers get checks in 24 hours. Yeah, I have. The average routing time, a lot of these checks are about three or four days for many, many viewers. Absolutely incredible. Johnny got $80,000 in five days. He got $35,000 in three days. He started on Monday. By Wednesday, he had $35,000. Absolutely incredible. And then finally, for you, this is federal stimulus from the federal government. So the federal government is sending the money. They don't know what state you live in. Moreover, they don't know if you wear lobster shorts, so keep it to yourself. <clears throat> they don't know what type of hairstyle you have either. So if it is a San Francisco hairstyle, uh, wear a hat. <laughs> <laughs> and those are the incredible sums of money you actually deserve. You get them. You go around this video, get those incredible sums of money from the shores of Santa Monica, California. Let's go back into the other breaking news that you need to know based upon what's happening this week. There was a series of major other data that came out in the last 24 hours that I want to go over, and it all impacts your wallet. The first one is the manufacturing data. Is the U.S. economy growing? Is the U.S. economy shrinking? Well, the data on that came out this week, and what did it show? It showed that the U.S. economy is shrinking. The Philadelphia Fed's number came in, and it basically should have been a positive number. A positive number on manufacturing shows that the U.S. economy is growing. It came in at a negative number, negative 10, ouch. The jobless claims number, new jobless claims number released on Thursday dropped to 213, 213,000, but no ground for celebration. It's still the highest level since June. Then we also had this week, in addition to all these CPI, PPI, and retail sales numbers, we also had this week the indication of what's happening internationally that could hurt us at home. The pound sterling, the currency in Great Britain, has now fallen to the lowest level against the US dollar. In 35 years, 40 years, yeah. Imagine if England's economy gets really tanked, how much we could get hurt as well. The data continued all throughout the week with a series of companies basically saying that there's downward guidance for the U.S. economy for the rest of this year and get ready. And of course, we had the major analysis that came in from Finch Ratings and from Credit Suisse that basically said, you have to understand that the downward spiraling of valuations will continue and definitely continue until you get all these Federal Reserve hikes out of your system. When are these Federal Reserves out of your system? Not to the middle of the next year. The Federal Reserve resumes action in just a few days from now, and they will raise those interest rates in the month of September, 75 basis point. That will cost everything more to live on. Anything that is flexible rate interest based will be hurt, and it won't just hurt that directly, but anything around it. So let's analyze the situation tonight, industry by industry, and your wallet by your wallet. First, the housing market, bad and getting worse. The housing market is in a housing recession, says the National Association of Home Builders. The data on the new home starts, existing home starts, and builders' confidence started falling apart in May into recessionary numbers. They've been worse month to month. 
all down. How much worse has the numbers gotten as of tonight? Number one, the average home sold in the United States is 14% of them is below the 2019 level. Number two, the average price of the home, excuse me, 2021 level. Compared to the 2019 level, 41% of the average homes in the United States price is below that level of then. Just incredible. So can you imagine if you're trying to sell your home now, 41% of the homes are selling less than they were in 2019? Moreover, 25% of Americans trying to sell their homes are having problems and having to cut the price of the homes. And the time that the homes in the market are growing by five days and more every consecutive day. Let's jump over to the mortgage applications. The mortgage rates were 3%, 2%, no less than a year ago. Tonight, 6%. By the end of the year, my projection, 7%. Let's jump over to corporate America. Corporate America is getting hurt, whether it's Federal Express, whether it's SNAP, because their bottom line is getting crushed. Less demand, more costs. And as those costs grow and the demand is sinking, then they're not going to be able to deliver the profitability that people originally thought they would. That means that the stocks are going down. Over to the bonds. The bonds are going to continue to go up because they understand the stocks are going to continue to get worse. And that the housing and that the Federal Reserve is going to come in much more aggressively. And then consumer confidence. Consumer confidence is derailing left and right, as indicated in that University of Michigan data today. Earlier this week, as that data came in with the consumer price index number on Tuesday showing that inflation was going higher in the last four weeks, the White House had the President of the United States respond to the situation. Now, unto itself, you have to wonder you have to wonder right off the back that why did they have the president respond to economic data? He's not an economist, he's a president. He's not expected to know everything. He has a staff to do that. Specifically, he has Janet Yellen, who is formerly head of the Federal Reserve. She could respond to economic data. He should have had her deal with the question. Instead, he dealt with the question. And as the leader of the free world, his job is to give out is to give optimism, but is also to give you accurate data. His comment was the following: the stock market does not necessarily reflect the state of the US economy. Wrong. Stock market does reflect the state of the economy. Stock market goes up. When consumer confidence and consumer spending is up, stock market goes down. When consumer confidence, spending, recession, inflationary environments, and economic uncertainty are getting worse. That's actually wrong statement. It's wrong data. He then says the economy is still strong. Where? <laughs> Where is the economy still strong? Again, not particularly accurate. Then he said unemployment is low. Well, 213,000, no. Low compared to August? <laughs> the new jobless claims in the U.S. economy in, in the month of April was 144,000. That was not even that particularly low. Tonight, it's 213,000. So it's definitely worse than it was in April. And the basics of economics 101 is that labor falls apart later in recession, not the start of recession. Next, he says jobs are up. True or false? Really wrong. If he's talking about job creations, no. Job creation had fell dramatically in the month of August. In the month of July, the job creation was 500,000, half a million. The number in the month of August, 300,000. Dramatic drop across the board. Next, manufacturing. So we had that data yesterday. He says manufacturing is good. Good? No. Manufacturing is contracted. The Philadelphia Fed number released yesterday was a negative number. That means contraction. A positive number would have been good, like a 1 or 2. It was a negative 10. Then he says, I think we're going to be fine. Well, optimism is fine, but wrong data is not fine. And the whole rest of the sentence was wrong data. Now, Wall Street is dealing with a similar situation. And they're not dealing with themselves specifically, but amateur, novice, unseasoned investors. Who are they? They're generally individuals who are less than 30 years of age who never live through a bear market. They may have a YouTube channel. They may be an analyst on TV. They may be your son or daughter. They may be your next-door neighbor. They think that everything goes up. Buy real estate, it goes up. Buy, auto, buy an auto, it goes up. Buy a stock, it goes up. Buy crypto, it goes up. That's not a bear market. And the analysis tonight from the Bank of America is that everything is valued overly in the stock market. The stock market is overvalued, and it's overvalued with what's going on in this economy right now. My takeaway, it's hideously overvalued. 
if you even think about more interest rate spikes from the Federal Reserve. I don't believe that the Bank of America comment that says the economy is overvalued in the minds of unseasoned investors is taking into account this interest rate spikes into next year from the Federal Reserve. I think they're basically looking at the status quo, saying stocks are overvalued based upon the status quo. I think the status quo is not going to be around much longer because the Federal Reserve is going to come in much more aggressively over the next few weeks. And then we have everything else. The concern, the sentiment, the mentality. I got to tell you, you're very smart. You're seasoned. You're intellectual. You focus. You learn. You earn. And yet other people who are less than 30 years old, maybe a little bit too jugular, not think it through, maybe a little bit in, uh, in, impulsive. And what do they think? Things will turn around very quickly. Things will fix themselves in two weeks, in three weeks, four weeks. The crypto winter is a two-week winter. The down market is just one month and then it comes back. The interest rate spikes from the Federal Reserve will end in September. They're all saying all those crazy statements. And those crazy statements tonight, in what I'm seeing in the markets, not, again, from seasoned investors, not from financial investors, not from banks, but the unseasoned investors, is that that is still out there. And that is why when you start this day with a morning daylight live on air at 9 a.m. and I report to you that FedEx is down because they say there's a recession underway, your response would be, uh, yeah, uh, obviously, duh, <laughs> duh, there's a recession underway. I got it. Well, yeah, of course there's a recession underway. And FedEx said, well, we'll be shipping a little bit less because people will be buying a little bit less because there's a recession underway. Well, yeah, that's sort of obvious. Why is FedEx down 24%? <laughs> Why was the whole market implosion today down 300 points? If you see the sensitivity of the markets in today's FedEx news, then you get my point. The sensitivity of the markets is stemming from wrong, fake optimism. Wrong, fake optimism. That everything is beautiful, everything is rose-colored glasses. And as soon as they see something with FedEx, which to you and I is pretty obvious, obviously FedEx is going to ship less in recession, people aren't buying as much in recession, they say, oh, my God, I'm shocked. <laughs> it's like you're watching a soap opera and you know the lead character cheated on that person on the show. You know there's an illegitimate child showing up in the next episode. And then they walk in, they say, I want half of the estate. I'm shocked. No, you're not. You knew this is what happens with that family. <clears throat> It's like when the senator from Kentucky walks in the ballroom at the Senate wearing those lobster shorts and everyone looks away. Are you shocked? No. You look away as well. <laughs> it's like when you wonder uh, why is the $12 ice cream in San Francisco now $14? Are you shocked? No. It was overpriced before. <laughs> you shouldn't be shocked by this. And that's what's important to understand across the board. Now, here is where my guidance is for you tonight. And my commentary as well. First, my guidance. If you are doing any of these following things, adjust accordingly. First, if you own a home and you have to get out of that home for whatever reason, let's say you bought it to flip it, please sell it quickly because the home prices are falling and you're not going to get a buyer when those mortgage rates surge higher, and they will, as the Federal Reserve is going to raise those interest rates. You can see mortgage rates jump to 7%. You're not going to have a buyer at 7%, and it's going to be very hard to get the price point you want. Sell it quickly. If you have to buy a home on the other side, the buyers, I don't know why you would have to buy a home, but let's say you do, please get that mortgage now. Get that mortgage now and make sure it's fixed. Number two, if you have any adjustable rate debt, please get rid of it. Car loans, credit card debt, please get rid of it or lock into something fixed. It's going to get worse. Number three, if you have any exposure to anyone that has anything on debt, be sure that your exposure will not impact your wallet. The most obvious example is a single is a person who works for a small business owner who is a mom and pop, and that mom and pop basically has you as their only employee, or maybe you and one other person. And they have all the merchandise bought on debt and all the products and the shelves bought on debt. Imagine, they're not going to be able to afford that debt as the Federal Reserve raises those rates. They're going to go under and they're going to lay you off. So I want you to be ready for that type of exposure to adjust accordingly. Next stocks. They're not coming back. They're not going to come back. You can do a rally. You can do a trade if you wish to. Trade up, trade out. But do not think that stocks are coming back in the next few weeks. They're not. We're in a two-year recession. They have a long way down to go. Bonds. Bonds are going higher. Bonds are going higher. Learn what investment-grade bonds are. 
maybe by watching this channel, we got a lot of new programming coming to you as well. And finally, crypto. Crypto winter. One month and then after that, it's crypto summer? No. Uh, crypto winter is with us for a while. A two-year recession means the things are under value for two years. It means they're down for two years. doesn't mean they're down for two weeks. And finally, my commentary tonight. Interesting comment I have, commentary I have for you across the board. My commentary tonight is the President of the United States and electric vehicles. If you look at the data that came in this week for the, the Consumer Price Index, which was the major source of inflationary data this week, what did we learn that was a driving force in that CPI on Thursday? And I don't want to be... Um, comical with my with my adverbs the driving force auto sales new auto sales when you remove new auto sales from the consumer price index number released on tuesday what happens to the number it drops dramatically let's pull up that data from the uh, let's pull up that data so you and i see what happened uh for that cpi dash w Auto to year to date is up um, enormously, 10%. But when you remove auto from the sales of, uh, fr from the CPI, and especially on, on Thursday's data, when you remove auto from retail's sales on, th on, on Thursday, what happens? Then the number goes the other direction. For example, on Thursday, we had the retail sales were up 0.3% in the month of August. Remove auto. Retail sales were down 0.1%. So there you go. What did the President of the United States do this week? He appeared in Michigan, touting the wonders of new electric vehicles and the charging stations passed by that new bill uh, by the Democrats on Capitol Hill. Good or bad? Here's my issue with the situation. The President of the United States, in a week in which inflation was the number one topic on everyone's lips, the inflation is being driven up the most by a lot of component parts, but one of the most important component parts is auto. Auto continues to go up, new car sales, new car sales, continues to go up month to month. And that rising of those auto prices is driving inflation through the roof. What did the president do? Go out and stand in front of three new electric vehicles. And those three new electric vehicles are from, the, are from the U.S. auto manufacturers that basically no less than two years ago were trying to get you into a 24, 24, 25, or $30,000 new vehicle. Those electric vehicles are $50,000, $60,000. You see the price escalation? The rollout of electric vehicles from the major GM, auto, the major U.S. auto manufacturers has now gotten their price point, at least for electric vehicles, from a $30,000 to a $40,000 vehicle now to a $60,000 vehicle. That's inflation. That's horrible inflation, new car auto inflation. And that inflation is driving that CPI up. Why is the president continually talking about cars? Now, it's great to talk about electric vehicles. It's great to talk about charging stations, which is not cars. It's a charging station. You could appear in front of a charging station. But to continually talk about the wonders of $60,000 cars from manufacturers that previously just two years ago three years ago trying to get you the thirty thousand dollar cars is basically trying to run the narrative of here's the new normal now let's go a little bit deeper into that that's what j pal speaks against about he speaks against that j pal pervasive inflation j pal does not want you to get used to a gallon of milk indefinitely being four dollars it used to be two dollars Joe Biden is appearing in front of vehicles and saying this is the new normal, $60,000 vehicles, when you used to get used to buying $30,000 vehicles. That's defying the logic of battling inflation. Jay Powell has a number to deal with and also a sentiment. His number is to get inflation down from 8.5% to 2%. That's number one. Number two, Jay Powell and the Federal Reserve also says they want to eradicate the notion in your mind that this is the new normal for your prices. You don't want to think that $5 milk is your new normal. You want to get back to that $2. Oh, is this a temporary $5? $2 is really where we always pay for milk. Joe Biden is appearing in front of $60,000 vehicles saying, this is your new normal. It's defined the concept of pervasiveness of inflation. And it's also touting one of the number one products that's driving inflation up. New car sales. 
And it's that type of narrative that I think is being missed by a lot of econom economists. And I realized it this afternoon that if we're trying to get inflation down, we need to get people stop buying overpriced items. And one of the most overpriced items out there are, are electric vehicles. They're hideously overpriced. Here would, be a here would be a similar situation. If I did it, you would say, what is LA doing? Imagine if I stood at LAX, LAX Air International Airport and I stood in front of one of the terminals and I said, it's just a great time to travel. Travel wherever you can. And let me interview some people uh, and telling you about why it's wonderful travel. Where are you going to, ma'am? I'm going to uh, Hawaii. How much did you buy for that ticket? $900, a domestic, a coach uh, with bad leg room. $900, congratulations, that's wonderful. Enjoy your trip. You think to yourself, wait a second, is LA trying to tell us that $900 is the new price for a domestic trip to Hawaii? And that is basically the problem, that people need to understand these prices cannot stay around. These prices need to go away. These prices are not the new normal, and that these prices need to eradicate. Some of these things we can do, some of we can't. We cannot get a landlord to change their price. If a property owner has an apartment building and wants to charge more money, you can't force the property owner to change the price. But we cannot promote, as an economy, overpricing of items. We can't appear in front of an airline and say, yes, we love $800, triple, uh, $800 round trip tickets from LAX to New York Kennedy Airport. We don't like that. We can't promote it. We shouldn't be promoting $70,000 electric vehicles when they don't have any $20,000 options for us, You know, $20,000 electric vehicles for us. And we shouldn't be doing anything similar. The White House got this right in that legislation that was passed a few weeks ago that medical insurance should be cheaper. Medical uh, care services should be cheaper. But in the month of August, it rose 1%. Now, that's great news for your Medicare Plan B people who have that cheaper medication coming in. But the White House needs to understand clean environment, charging stations, good. Clean environment should not be promoting the wonders of overpriced electric vehicles. It's not the first time the President of the United States has done it, and may not be the last. And that's my commentary tonight. I'd like to hear your comments and see what you think as well. Finally, a new twist to this channel. Just for a day, or maybe for a few days. I'm testing out a new feature on this channel. A new feature rolled out by the platform that allows comments under the video to potentially post. This is what happens. If you write a comment, it's held. It does not post. I then review the comments, and if I like certain comments, I can let them post. Not all comments will post. With tens and, you know, 100 videos a day on this channel, do I have time to read through 20,000 comments a day and, and edit them and, and determine which comments post? No, absolutely not. So, if you have a very nice comment in a particular video, perhaps this one, try writing a beautiful comment. And if I see it, I may allow it to post. Now, if you write a beautiful comment it doesn't post, doesn't mean I didn't like it. It means that it's just a lot of comments to go through. We're testing it out. Again, if you want to come in and say lobster shorts are high fashion and $12 ice cream is underpriced and San Francisco hairstyles is the new, is the new normal, that comment will not post. <laughs> From the shores of Santa Monica, California, the program continues throughout the night. With evenings at eight every night at 5 o'clock, we continue with countdown at 6 o'clock. Streaming and signals at 7 o'clock. 8 o'clock is extra. 9 o'clock is sunset, and the programming continues throughout the night. And don't forget to jump into LA Live on 1, 2, and 3 channels. LA 1, LA 2, and LA 3. Stay with me all weekend long. I'll have new programming with you all weekend long. We got a lot to go over this weekend. And we're going to have a lot of fun. And I hope we, you had fun tonight as well. From the shores of Santa Monica, California, God bless. Stay informed and stay focused. Have a beautiful night. Don't forget to become a member to get those incredible sums of money. Become part of this incredible purple power. Stay informed and stay focused. Have a beautiful night. And as always, stay here, stay informed. And stay with LA for more.